Welcome back to AAKP's annual patient meeting. My name is Paul Conway and I serve as the Chair of Policy and Global Affairs for AAKP. In this next panel, you'll learn how patient insight data and research is being applied, applied through innovation, regulatory policy, and future research. Our next speaker is Dr. Harv Feldman, and Dr. Feldman serves as the Deputy Executive Director of the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI. Dr. Feldman is a 35-year practicing nephrologist. He knows kidney patients quite well, and he also understands very well that innovation has not really happened in the kidney space for a very long time. That's why it's especially important that Dr. Feldman is at PCORI, because he understands that research turns into innovation and it turns into public policy. Dr. Feldman is gonna go through and outline for us what the future for PCORI holds, both in terms of research and some insights into their reauthorization and their upcoming agenda involving patients. Dr. Feldman is also the editor-in-chief of the American Journal for Kidney Diseases, AJKD, which is the largest clinical journal in the kidney space. And he is also the former president of the College of Epidemiology. It's a true honor to have him, and he is a absolute champion for patients, patient engagement, and a true plus for PCORI at this point in their reauthorization. Dr. Feldman, go right ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. And let me just say thank you to Paul for that very kind introduction. I am honored to have been invited to speak um, with you all today at this uh, annual and really very important gathering of kidney patients. Um, as you all know, kidney disease takes a terrible toll on American patients and patients worldwide. These numbers are well known, but they certainly bear some repeating. One in three Americans are at risk for kidney disease. Nearly 37 million people are affected by chronic kidney disease in this country. And shockingly, still 90% of them may not be aware that they have kidney disease. Moreover, we are all aware of the unacceptable continuation of great disparities by race and the occurrence of kidney disease with African Americans suffering nearly four times as much kidney failure as do whites. Now, I know and I hope you also know that we can do better to address this problem by improving access to information about effective treatments and care choices. And this is where PCORI can come and play an important role. Now, I am a nephrologist and clinical researcher, and I have been privileged to work with the kidney disease community and with AAKP for many years. As Paul indicated, I've recently taken on a new role as Deputy Executive Director for Patient-Centered Research Programs at PCORI, where I bring my decades-long background as a researcher and a physician to continue the important work of building evidence so patients can make better healthcare decisions. Now, I don't wanna start my formal remarks before I really say thank you to all of you. I know many AAKP members worked tirelessly um, on PCORI's successful congressional reauthorization in 2019. And our reauthorization has given us tools to promote research in kidney disease that I will turn to and talk about during this presentation. AAKP's influence and advocacy have gone well, beyond the relationship with PCORI, making extraordinary strides for patients with kidney disease that were so well typified by the 2019 Presidential Executive Order on Advancing American Kidney Health that would not have been possible without you. So this is the agenda I'll follow today. First, I'll share with you PCORI's unique approach to health research funding more broadly, including ways in which we partner and engage with patients and all of our stakeholders. I'll share some highlights of PCORI's funding portfolio, touching on a few kidney disease studies that we have funded and that highlight patient-motivated and patient-empowered research and the strong connections between the kidney disease community and PCORI. And then finally, I'll close by sharing with you some of our plans for the future and an invitation to you to get involved. For those of you who aren't familiar with PCORI and our work, I want to share with you that PCORI is an independent research institute established by federal authorizing law initially in 2010, and as I indicated a moment ago, reauthorized in 2019. And our mandate from that legislation is to assist patients, clinicians, purchasers, policymakers in making informed health decisions using high quality evidence on clinical effectiveness of medical treatments 
and services. You know, we focus on real world populations and in particular often on historically marginalized populations and those underrepresented in research. We seek to answer questions about what works best for patients given their particular circumstances and we focus on outcomes that patients and our stakeholders identify as most important. And finally, but certainly not least important, very important, is that we're also charged with the dissemination of those findings as we recognize that the best research in the world does no good if not used to improve patient care. So on this slide, you see depicted PCORI's mission, which is simple and we hope powerful, to help people make informed healthcare decisions, improve healthcare delivery and outcomes by producing and promoting high integrity, evidence-based information that comes from research guided by patients, caregivers, and the broader healthcare community. We do this by funding comparative clinical effectiveness research, we call that sometimes CER, which compares the benefits and harms of different approaches to prevent, diagnose, treat, or monitor clinical disease or improve healthcare delivery. We seek to answer real world questions about what works best for patients given their circumstances and focus on outcomes that patients and other stakeholders identify as being most important to them. If there are two principles at the heart of PCORI's work, they are patient-centeredness, as you see depicted here, and engagement. Now, patient-centeredness at PCORI means that the research projects we fund focus on outcomes that are important to patients and researchers. These may include outcomes such as quality of life or functionality, in addition to more traditional clinical measures. When we speak about PCORI's approach to engagement, we think of this as a practice whereby we engage researchers and stakeholders to meaningfully partner with one another and importantly and universally with patients, as well as caregivers, payers, purchasers, clinicians in all aspects of the research that we fund. Let me turn to our patient engaged research portfolio. So this is a, a fairly simple depiction of the principles as you see entitled here underlying our public and patient engagement in research. Now engagement, as I stated, is central to PCORI's work, including the voices and lived experiences of patients in all that we do ensures that we're studying issues that matter and outcomes that matter as well, most to our patient partners. The principles underlying effective engagement at PCORI, as shown here, include reciprocal relationships in which the roles and decision-making authority in the research that we fund are defined and implemented collaboratively. We truly believe in co-learning throughout the research process about research itself, and in particular about the patient-centeredness of that research. And partnership is a principle whereby we value all members of our multi-stakeholder team who bring different backgrounds, expertise, and skills. And then the final three here, transparency, honesty, and trust, as found also foundational principles are the basis for decisions that we make inclusively across all of our research activities, including all of our research partners. PCORI funded research projects incorporate patients and other stakeholders in many different ways through participation on one of our advisory councils as co-investigators and through other ad hoc groups that we form throughout the research process. I want to just highlight uh, for a moment a PCORI award that some of you um, may have participated in or benefited from. This was a PCOR track engagement award that came to AAKP in 2019. And we were delighted that that award enabled you all to develop a patient-centered outcomes research track at the 2019 AAKP meeting. And I'll return to this type of engagement award a little bit later in this talk. Now, this track was designed to empower patients to get involved at all levels of research, design, implementation, and participation. So, there are also many resources we have developed at PCORI to support multi-stakeholder teams. We build capacity to help communities participate in patient-centered comparative effectiveness research by developing and disseminating training resources. Examples of these, and these are all freely available online, are a product 
called Building Effective Multi-Stakeholder Teams. This is a resource designed to help research teams work together as a productive team. And then another, Research Fundamentals, which is a course about the research process and how best to become involved in patient-centered outcomes research. Now I'm going to turn to just a bit of information more generally about our portfolio before focusing in on some of the kidney disease aspects of it. So as I mentioned before, PCORI has been um, funding um, uh, patient-centered research for about 12 years at this point. And this very high level overview of our portfolio shows you that we have been able to fund almost 2,000 projects at a cost of about $3.4 billion over that 12-year period. Now, these projects encompass clinical effectiveness research, the establishment of research infrastructure, including uh, something called PCORNet, which is a clinical research network utilizing electronic health record data. We fund methods research, and importantly, we fund people's opportunity to engage in research and then we also have funding opportunities for dissemination and implementation projects. You can see here as well the distribution of the conditions that we have funded where mental and behavioral health conditions are among those that are most commonly funded in PCORI's uh, portfolio, but we also fund many other areas of health and disease, including cancer and cardiovascular disease, neurological disorders, nutritional and metabolic disorders, and of course, kidney disease itself, but also there are elements of kidney disease embedded in the categories that you see here. So this now focuses us on the kidney disease portfolio. And over time, we have been able to fund 24 projects, totaling approximately $100 million of funding focused on kidney disease. And these projects are either active or are fully completed. And they include studies involving patients with chronic kidney disease, oftentimes end-stage kidney disease. And commonly, these projects include individuals who have multiple and complex conditions. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit more about a few of these studies to illustrate the kinds of research PCORI funds in the kidney disease space and showing you the kinds of questions that we really encourage people bringing forward to PCORI. So this is the first project I'll highlight, a study by Dr. Subramanian uh, and colleagues. And this, like all of our other projects, include patients and other stakeholders in the research team. It compared two groups of patients, all with advanced kidney disease, who had not yet begun dialysis. One group received an online decision aid, the other did not. And the research team found that this decision aid increased patients' knowledge of chronic kidney disease and their treatment options, that it increased the patient's confidence when choosing between treatments, and also the patient's sense of certainty about their dialysis treatment choices. A second study, which the investigators have called Prepare Now, is a cluster randomized trial where eight clinics providing care for people with advanced kidney disease who were not requiring dialysis were allocated to a patient-centered care program or usual care. And the more patient-centered care program included the alliance of the nephrology team with other individuals and the access to physician tools to support patients in making earlier treatment decisions. And the research teams are seeking, and we don't have the answers yet from this study, to find out if these steps can help patients make treatment decisions that are right for them before, importantly, before kidney failure occurs. The PRESERVE study uh, conducted at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia was awarded just last year and will soon begin recruitment. So we also don't have the results from this study, but the team will compare different ways to monitor and treat high blood pressure as you know, nearly a universal problem in the kidney disease community, both in adults and children, with the goal to preserve kidney function. And they'll be looking at innovative ways of monitoring blood pressure either at home using devices or in the clinic and see which of those approaches is best for patients. They also are planning to survey 800 children and their caregivers to learn more about other symptoms such as pain, fatigue, sleep, emotional state, relationships that are experienced by children with kidney disease. 
And very interestingly, this study also will take advantage of that resource I mentioned earlier, PCORnet, a funded network of health care systems that gather data from electronic health records to again further empower the kidney disease community to do real world research um, using real world patient experience. This fourth study um, by Garamani and colleagues looks at how information resources and online peer mentoring can support patients with chronic kidney disease and their caregivers. After 18 months, kidney disease symptoms were fewer and less severe and physical health better among patients who received in-person mentoring. They were also more involved in their health care. And finally, I'll highlight that we funded a study of patients with kidney failure who were receiving dialysis. And this was led by Dr. Hines, who was the principal investigator of the research group. The study investigated quality of life changes after receiving care that included the addition of a primary care physician, a nurse coordinator, a pharmacist, and community health workers to the dialysis teams. And after 18 months of follow-up, patients reported better quality of life, better mental health, and fewer impediments to their daily activities if they had access to these more diverse teams. And more patients said as well that they had a physician they considered their personal physician more frequently if they received this type of integrated care. So I hope you can see that in these studies, the kinds of patient-centered outcomes that characterize what we do at PCORI and what we fund at PCORI um, and how we can bring those resources to the kidney disease community. And again, all motivated and powered by what matters most to patients. So I'd like to close with just a, a couple of more slides about how you all can get involved. Now, PCORI over the last two years has renewed its strategic plan and it really lays out our plans for the future and PCORI's approach to research funding and supporting research activities and communities over the years to come. The plan lays out what we see as a bold vision for PCORI's role in helping to address major health and healthcare issues facing the nation broadly, but of course also facing the kidney disease community. Now, the core of this plan is a set of five ambitious long-term goals which we call the National Priorities for Health. And you can see those depicted on the left side of the slide. They are to increase evidence for existing interventions and emerging innovations in health, to enhance infrastructure to accelerate patient-centered outcomes research, some of which I have shown you today. They are to advance the science of dissemination and implementation and the communication underlying effective dissemination and they are very importantly focused on achieving health equity. And then finally, on accelerating progress towards developing approaches to effective integrated learning health systems. Now, the National Priorities for Health form the basis of a more detailed research agenda that will guide our funding of clinical and comparative effectiveness research and other projects over the years to come. And as always, we'll continue to seek input from our stakeholders as we build out our more detailed research project funding plans, and we'll be looking to you to become and hopefully to stay engaged with us. So if you are looking, and I hope you will, look for opportunities to get involved with PCORI, we have many different opportunities that you can pursue. We're always looking to bring in new insights and fresh new voices and have many pathways through which that happens. The PCORI annual meeting is our main large-scale public activity that brings patients, researchers, clinicians, caregivers, insurers, and many other stakeholders together for two days of really stimulating sessions, highlighting different aspects of PCORI's work. And this year, the meeting is in late October. You can register for free and participate for free on our website, and you can participate, of course, virtually. Our ambassador program is a great opportunity to become part of a diverse community of people working to move the culture of health research towards a more patient-centered model. Our advisory panels bring together people from across the healthcare community to advance PCORI's activities and advise its board of governors um, that oversees all of PCORI's work. You can also get involved 
uh, by participating in our various review programs that oversee our research, our merit review and our peer review programs. And then of course, we also have convening events like the one we supported at the 2019 AAKP meeting that I described earlier. I really encourage you to explore the PCORI website for more information on all of these opportunities to get involved. This is a bit more focused for those of you who might be wishing to apply for research funding. An important aspect of PCORI funded research is that research teams often include a broad variety of people with diverse backgrounds. All of you can be part of this research community. What you see here is we support some research activities that are targeted and the targeted topics derive from input from our stakeholders that have helped us to identify areas of research interest that are most important to patient communities. We also have research offerings that are more broadly focused on topics brought forward by the research teams, such as, as you see depicted here, our broad pragmatic studies or our phased clinical trials. Finally, I wanna call your attention to our engagement funding opportunities that include three main possibilities or funding streams. The first is our dissemination initiatives. And our goal here is to support organizations and communities in actively disseminating PCORI funded research findings to those who can use the information to inform their healthcare decisions. We also fund convenings, which could be used to convene community members around a specific PCORI funding research finding to increase awareness of evidence, as well as to enhance people's ability to use and apply evidence. And then finally, we have awards that are for capacity building of organizations and communities to help them develop, demonstrate, and evaluate the pathways and mechanisms needed to incorporate comparative effectiveness research findings into clinical care. Now you can find, again, all of this at our website, as well as a great deal of additional information on comparative effectiveness research and patient-centered activities. So uh, to wrap things up, I, I wanna circle back to a study, and this was long before I came to PCORI, but you know, typified for me really the kinds of things that PCORI does and what it is committed to doing. Many years ago, we funded a study with the Zuni Nation in New Mexico, seeking to really tackle the dual epidemics of kidney disease and diabetes affecting that community. The proportion of people within the Zuni Nation with kidney failure is among the highest in the United States. And that project demonstrated, importantly, the trained community health workers coming to patients' homes was associated with better intentional weight loss, which was important in terms of controlling hypertension and diabetes. And these individuals showed improvement in other markers of kidney disease and diabetes. The local principal investigator indicated at that time that with the support from PCORI, we quote, did a beautiful thing. Patients started taking care of themselves because of that, we were able to see improvements in the clinical picture. And this is the kind of story that I think makes all of us at PCORI proud and that we seek to replicate with additional funding opportunities that we can provide to the kidney disease community. And after spending decades as a clinician and researcher, I now very deeply understand the value of this kind of research, especially when focused on historically disadvantaged populations not well represented in research in this country and beyond. And I very much look forward to working with my colleagues at PCORI and importantly with all of you as we continue to combat kidney disease together. So again, I, I want to thank you for welcoming me into your conference today. I wanna to thank you for all of the work you all do uh, to promote the health um, and wellness of individuals afflicted with kidney disease. And I wanna thank you for your past participation in PCORI programs and for the future um, activities and engagement that I hope um, you will pursue. I'd like to thank all of our speakers today, both for their commitment for patients and their hands-on and practical efforts to translate patient insights and patient research into new innovations, regulatory policy, and future research. It's been an honor to have each of them, and you should know 
that these three folks are true champions for patients and good friends of AAKP. Thank you very much.